What a crazy exciting day. What you see behind me is chat GPT based on GPT-4. That's right. GPT-4 was just announced by OpenAI a few minutes ago, and it's one of the most advanced obviously language models that's ever been produced by humans. So right now there's a wait list that you can join for the API. And then if you have ChatGPT Plus, supposedly you're able to access it. Although I have ChatGPT Plus and so far I have not been able to access GPT-4. So what are some of the interesting things that we see that it's able to do? So GPT-4 is able to solve more difficult problems with greater accuracy. It has more knowledge baked in. The language model is significantly larger than that of GPT-3 or even 3.5. Now, we do know they did mention in one of the videos that they actually launched this in August of this last year. That's when the training was done. And so they've been internally evaluating and doing all the things they need to do to kind of gatekeep the language model that it puts out. Probably the biggest thing here is that it's now multimodal. It's not only able to take in text input, but it's also able to take in images as input. So you can give it a visual input like this. This blows my mind. What can I make with these ingredients? And then it actually gives you the output as recipes. Another huge deal in this is the amount of text that it can actually generate. One of the big drawbacks, especially for content creators, if I wanted to create a YouTube script or a blog post, I could only pull back about 3,000 words with ChatGPT before it sort of fell on its face and stopped returning results. Now it's able to do up to 25,000 words of text, and that's also as input. So you can see here, for example, they're giving input as a Wikipedia article, and then it's producing a consolidated output based on that. So you can not only give it visual input, but also longer textual input as well, and then get back a little bit broader range of outputs. Now they talk a lot about how GPT-4 is much better at advanced reasoning. So one of the examples I saw was an image of a man holding a set of balloons, and there's obviously strings holding the balloons in the air. They asked ChatGPT, what would happen if I cut the strings? And it said, well, the balloons would fly away. That's really interesting that it's able to deduce that from the visual representation of the images. So its reasoning capabilities are significantly better than it was before. Some of the other things, obviously, it was already very good at taking tests. So we know that, you know, the, uh, the bar exam was one of the first ones that it passed. It also passed the MCAT and a couple others. ChatGPT was 10th percentile in its passing score. Now it's up above 90th and in some cases 99th percentile. So that's an amazing kind of leap in its knowledge of the world and the universe and how everything works. They talk a lot about how uh, this is sort of, you can think of this as, you know, you could give a, a child, for example, that's learning a new concept in school. You can provide an image and then it's able to break down mathematical concepts and things like that in a way that's really easy to understand based on your age limit. So I see a lot of use cases for this in the education realm. This, um, I'm sort of torn on this because they said we spent six months making it safer and more aligned. Uh, I, I wonder if this means it's, you know, more aligned to one political ideology than another. I'm, I like that they have some safeguards in place. I think you have to have guide rails and guardrails for AI in general. But um, I don't know. I'm a little bit concerned about uh, their, their lack of openness on what that exactly means. So GPT-4 is 82% less likely to respond to requests for disallowed content. Okay, well, it was already problematic getting it to re you know, respond with information that you wanted in some instances. So I'm, like I said, I'm a little bit upset about that. But it does say that it produces, uh, it's 40% more likely to produce factual responses than GPT-3. Previous versions of ChatGPT sounded very confident in the results and it wasn't always factual or accurate. And I think I had an example where it came back and it said some just completely nonsensical things about the specs for a Tesla Model S. And it's hard to deduce that unless you're going through and fact checking everything that it comes back with. So the fact that it's 40% more factual in its responses, that's a huge step in the right direction. I'm looking forward to that.
that's kind of the highlights of the launch. I'm waiting to get in, like I said, and as soon as I am, I'm going to put up a bunch of different comparison videos side by side showing you GPT 3.5 versus GPT 4. It's an exciting time to be alive. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and uh, we'll talk to you very, very soon. See y'all.